Hello and welcome to Ways to Change the World. I'm Krishnan Giri Murthy and this is the podcast in which we talk to remarkable people about the big ideas in their lives and the events that have helped shape them. And my guest today is Gary Jones, the editor of the Daily Express, who, if not changing the world, is certainly changing the Daily Express. Gary spent years on the Mirror group of newspapers and then became the editor of the Daily Express in 2018 when Richard Desmond's Northern and Shell sold the newspaper to Trinity Mirror, which is now called Reach, um, and had to sort of switch allegiances from a Labour supporting newspaper to a very conservative supporting newspaper. And, um, well, what did you find when you got there? Uh, I mean, it was a jump. I mean, I kind of took the job at the last minute. It was offered to me. I had five minutes to make up my mind, which... uh, I know in newspaper terms, uh, it's probably about the normal, really. Do you want to take the job or not? Um, the, you know, the Express is obviously... I mean, it was something my parents read as a child, so I was used to it. Uh, but it had kind of faded from where I thought newspapers should be. I, it, it seemed to me they would kind of lost its uh, significance. So suddenly I found myself there with, with the staff thinking, OK, what do I do next? Um, you know, how do I get my head around the fact that, you know, I've worked for a, a Labour-supporting newspaper, you know, for the majority of my working career, and I'm now conservative Brexiteer. Did you read the Daily Express at that point? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll be totally honest with you. I mean, it's a long time since I've read the Daily Express, but did you read it? I, I kind of read it off and on. I, I, you know, I, I get every newspaper every day. I'd look at it. I had a lot of... Uh, Weather stories, Diana stories, and health stories that were, were, were kind of quite, kind of out there, as it were. Um, it, it kind of wasn't for me. It wasn't as the Express that I grew up with, you know, which in the '60s, you know, when I was a kid, it was my entry point to the world. I suppose, uh, you know, I came from quite a small town background, and the Express seemed hugely exciting as a newspaper and. Yeah, it was, was Britain's biggest selling at one, at one point. So, uh, you know, I used to go and I'd go and pick the paper up every day for my dad. Uh, he hated me reading it. I'd, 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 I'd crumple it occasionally. And I remember on one occasion it was so crumpled I thought he was going to go mad. And I ironed it and I burnt it and he went even madder. And I thought, well, uh, you know, this bit of paper's got to be really important if my dad wants it pristine. Uh, every day. So, you know, I, w- I would kind of read it every day and it, it gave me an insight, I suppose, into into the bigger world. I mean, is that what sparked your interest in papers? Yeah, it did, yeah. It was, it was a very small town mentality, very parochial. Where was this? The uh, this was, yeah, in kind of Wallasey, just across from Liverpool. My family from Liverpool originally. I uh, moved across the water. You know, it was a bit kind of posher if you... If you had a few bob and your aspiration, if you were kind of an express reader, that, that was kind of, you had a semi, a new semi, that was, it was, it was kind of a cul-de-sac kind of way of life. Um, and the express to me, newspaper was kind of, I mean, I wanted to get out of there. I hated it even as a child. Uh, I used to get headaches every Sunday. I just, the whole lifestyle. I mean, I don't want my childhood to sound out of misery, but <laughs> I did know I had to escape. What, what, what did you want to escape? Uh, just the mundanity of life, really. You know, my life was a kind of mixture of just school every day and we'd go on caravan holidays and everything seemed so small and, and uh, it was kind of keeping up with the Joneses, you know, called the Jones. Everything was, was regimented and expectation was low and, you know, the institutions I didn't really understand. I just kind of felt everything was oppressive. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, the Queen was opening the Mersey Tunnel. I was about 10, and I, I thought, I don't want to go there. This has got nothing to do with me. Don't try and control me in this way. But, I mean, I kind of understood that that was a kind of post-war generation, as the fact that parents had come through uh, mass change, and they wanted some aspiration, and they kind of, I don't know, they wanted me to be a banker, I think. And do you think they were typical express readers? Yeah, they were. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they had aspirations. They wanted to, they, they owned their own home. They wanted life to improve. Um, you yeah, know, they, they were kind of loyal, small C conservatives. Um, is that still the Daily Express? Really? Yeah, it's kind of Middle England. Yeah, it, it is Middle England. It, it's people who, uh, I think the, the readers of the Express have been kind of misunderstood because 
to me, they're, they're compassionate and caring, and I've come across a lot of them since I've joined the Express, and they write to me, they message me, you know, I'm, uh, you know I've, I've got this kind of army out there who just tell me what they like and dislike. Uh, you know, they're, they're, some of them were pretty suspicious of me originally, as you might expect, coming from a kind of mirror background. I had a few sleepless nights, quite literally, and occasionally I would drink more rosé than was good for me, uh, and I would reply to the emails because, you know, I, I, I wanted them to believe that I could still give them uh, elements of the newspaper that were important to them. So d does that mean the Daily Express was just getting it wrong for its own readers? I mean, under those Desmond years? I mean, the image I have of the Express was this sort of ranty, anti-immigrant, yeah. you know, royal obsessed, old-fashioned, yeah. parochial white thing. That, I, that, had, that meant nothing to me. You sort of didn't, you know, didn't really bear much relationship to journalism. Uh, where, where had it gone wrong? It, it dis defined itself by quite narrow terms. You know, it is, you know, mature readership. Let's put it like that. You know, people of a certain, certain age and health issues, dementia. Uh, obviously, Brexit, mightily big, and you know, certainly the Express led the kind of push for the referendum. Uh, but, uh, you know, the weather, uh, yeah, I mean, we're all obsessed by the weather, but I haven't put the weather on the front page once. I mean, to me, it's a bad news day if you're doing the weather. And I know some of my colleagues think otherwise, but, you know, I, I, I don't mind a weather story, but don't put it on the front page unless you really have to or unless it is a news story. Some of the front pages in the past about immigrants and uh, the Muslim community came me, made me wince a little. I wanted to change that. It's not what I'm about. I mean, the staff are great. I mean, the staff, I mean, as soon as I walked in, my first news conference, I said, look, uh, we ain't going to be doing any anti-immigrant stories ever again, and we're not going to be doing any anti-Muslim stories ever again. And, 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 and what was their reaction? Uh, you know, it was like a cloud being lifted. They were fine. Relief, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think... I said, look, we all own this newspaper. I want a newspaper that is kind of modern for the society we live in. What is your job as the editor of a newspaper? My job is to every day look at what's happening out there and present words and pictures in a way that is informative, entertaining, campaigning, investigative. It's to have a relationship with the reader in a way that relevance, it means something. You know, I mean, if you have to go and buy a newspaper every day, you, you have a relationship, a real relationship, a strong relationship. And my job is to, to serve the readers. You know, I, I, I think I have a pretty good idea who the readers are. And so is it to give the readers what you think they want? Or is not, it to give them entirely, what you think is not, good for them? Well, <laughs> well, it may, kind of makes me sound a bit like a doctor in the fact that, no, 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 this is, good. This is the way we should behave. No, I mean, it, it, it's to represent a variety of views, views that's within their kind of comfort zone. Uh, but myself and my team have challenged, I suppose, the readers, and I think it's important to do, to react in a certain way and to get behind a... I mean, I'm to me, campaigns and attitude give a newspaper a reason. It gives an identity. And, and to me, it was important to me to, to mould a new identity and be modern. I mean, I've got, you know, two young teenagers. And, you know, I mean, my, my, my son wasn't greatly pleased when I went to the Express because he's a bit of a Corbynista. And uh, he just, he wasn't entirely delighted. With both my children, my son and my daughter, we have a lot of conversation about life and how, you know, they are the next generation, need to move it on, need to do stuff, need to, need to change things for the better. So I, I kind of felt in, I suppose, the right place to make a change. Is, is he the son you sent to Eton? Yes, so yeah. He's an, he's an Etonian Corbynista. Yeah, he's, a, he's um, I was going to say freak then, but he's, that's going to freak him out, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, in a way, uh, he's always had those views, and I suppose he's got them from me from an early age, and we talk a lot about politics. And so you're Labour, are you? Sort of straight, straight Yeah, no, I've, I've, look, I, I don't hide it. I've voted Labour all my life, you know, it's my background, my child, my childhood, I suppose, part of my DNA. Uh, you know, at the same time, I, you know, I, I probably have a quite a complex view of life and the fact that, you know, I had a, what Alistair Campbell called a bog standard education. And, uh, you know, if the teachers turned up, sometimes it was a cause of celebration. Uh, they were definitely commies, you know, they were kind of, I mean, we did economics, but we only did economics from, I think, you know, kind of a, uh, a sort of 
that kind of takeover. And history was always, you know, it was the Chartists. It was a very kind of left-leaning education because that's that was the teachers. That was their view. And, and I was a kind of product of that. Uh, you know, I kind of felt distanced from all the other things in life. You know, I mean, probably vaguely heard of Eton as a, as a, as a, as a child, but, you know, it meant nothing to me. But, you know, I kind of thought, well, in sending him there, that's going to perhaps harden it up in a way, and he will learn whether it's life is about self or service. But, but so how, how do you as Labour man yeah. put out a Tory pro-Brexit newspaper? Um, it's just, a, it's, is it, you know, are you very cynical about it? No, or? no, not at all. You know, I mean, I, I, I think where this has helped is that I listen a lot to what people say, and, and you know, I think as a journalist, you need to see both sides of every story. And, you know, I've understood Brexit, I understand those who voted for Brexit and what they want from it, and, and they've, you know, I get a big letter bag every day on the subject. So I know very much the stance of, of the reader. Um, yes, you know, it sort of, has been challenging, um, but at the same time, I, I, you know, I have an express reader in my mind, and every single day I go to work and put a newspaper together. I'm thinking, you know, what do they want? I mean, it doesn't mean I don't put both sides of the story because we do, and I think that's important. And when I, I met the readers recently, that they like the style. We, do, we don't rant within the words. We like to present the facts. But the, is that mental contortion normal in newspapers? You know, where you are. You are basically producing a product for somebody you disagree with about most things. <laughs> uh, it's no, it's 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 not normal. Uh, you know, most people go to work thinking, okay, this is what I'm about, and this is my comfort zone. Uh, it has been out of my comfort zone. It, it probably is my comfort zone now, and the fact that I've 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 got used to it, and I, I've I've got used to the way of putting a newspaper together, where you know I've ad adopted uh, viewpoints. Uh, you know, and, and the economists know what, what I'm about. I, I, I allow people to have free reign to say what they want to say. I mean, occasionally, sometimes the wording will, will be a bit harsh or extreme. I go, oh, no, no, I, I don't really like that. Just, you know, can we tone that down a bit? But, you know, by and large, I probably got there in my mind. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, it, it's an issue. You know, I mean, I was with my son last night, and he's arguing the hell out of me and about this, that, and the other, and I'm... Um, you know, I get a bit, I get a bit confused when I'm talking to him at times. But I mean, you know, your headline today yes. on day of recording is finally Corbyn reveals Brexit betrayed. Yes. So Jeremy Corbyn has just changed his position on, Bre yes. on, on Brexit. Yeah. They're, they're now yep. pro referendum. Yeah. Um, in, in in all circumstances, you've called it a betrayal on the front page of your newspaper. Yes. You don't think it's a betrayal, do you? Um, well, I, I actually, I think that the one thing I really do think about is Brexit is that we need to honour the result of the referendum and it does need to be a, uh, it does need to deliver I mean Labour's in this kind of curious position where you know and, and, and when I was on the mirror it was quite complex because 50% of the readers were Remainers and 50% were Brexiteers I, I believe that you know it would be hugely anti-democratic to have a second referendum so that on, on that point I do disagree uh, you know do I think there should be a, a, a deal yes I mean we supported Theresa May's Deal, even though you know, I, I suppose you know, a lot of kind of thinking was that it wasn't great, and you know, getting it through Parliament. Obviously, we've seen exactly how that hasn't happened. So, uh, look, I I, I, I kind of know where our readers are, are there. They reminded me, they wrote to me very vigorously about what they wanted, and me to maintain a line. Um, you know, I try to give both sides. At the end of the day, that is the headline they believe in. You know, I mean, at the beginning, yeah, I probably went a bit overboard. You know, I mean, I, I kind of thought, I, I kind of wanted to prove probably too much to express readers that I, I was their man. Yeah. And I am their man. And, you know, sometimes perhaps I went a, a bit too far. So you did a, you did a front page, didn't you, with um, the White Cliffs of Dover? Yes, yes. Uh, talking about, you know, the great view forward for Britain yes. after Brexit. Yes. That is not something you personally believe, is it? So that, that's what I mean. It's sort of yeah. Uh, um, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean. Well, I mean, it was actually it was a quote from Boris Johnson. Yeah. And it was you know back to Boris's optimism. That was what he was about. That's what the readers believed. Uh, it, it was kind of one of those front pages that was uh, you know they took over the entire front. And I uh, yeah, that was during my early days. And I thought, well, that is the message that people want. 
Um, because a lot of people just, you know, have this sort of very cynical view of newspapers that, mm. you know, you, you, none of you believe what you're writing anyway. Mm. So that, that, that's what I'm trying to work out where this fits into that, you know, sort of that people yeah. think journalists are liars and they apply, yes. you know, they apply it to newspapers or broadcast or whatever it is. Where, where does your, you know, this position you're, you're describing, which yes. is... You know, you're, you're putting out a product which has its own identity that isn't really in tune with your personal identity, and you're trying to find an accommodation between the two. Yes. Where does that sit with, well, you know, journalists are a cynical bunch who print a load of things they don't believe anyway? Well, I, I'm, look, it, it's my job to, to serve the readers. This is not the Daily Gary Jones. This is the Daily Express, and, you know, I, you know, I work for the team, you know, and, and, the, you know, and I work for the banner and the brand and, and the newspaper with a, with a rich heritage. So it's my job to secure that for the long term. And So who uh, decides what, what the, pol the political positioning of well, the it's newspaper me. is? I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, so, it's, you, you, so you could make this a Labour newspaper if you wanted? Or, or would your, uh, would well, your it, owners it, it, have it, that decision? Uh, it, it, um, it would have been an, an act, I think, of commercial suicide to do so. I mean, the Express toyed with it in the past when it did support Labour for a, a brief period. Uh, the readers certainly didn't like it, and they lost, uh, they lost a fair amount of them. Um, I mean, I, I, I knew when I accepted the job what I was going to have to do. And I think there were constraints in any job. I'm, I'm here for a short time. I'm a custodian. I, I, I love Daily Express. I, I, I didn't think I'd be able to say that I loved it again, but, you know, I do. And, you know, I greatly admire the readers, and, and, and the readers... I think have been misunderstood in the fact that everybody's pigeonholed. And, and I think the, the big issue with where we're at politically at the moment is, yeah, that, that's who you are. Well, actually, you know, the Daily Express reader, you know, is not someone, you know, who's kind of getting all ranty and punchy and, you know, just thinks in a certain way. They're, 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 they're actually kind of much wider, much more thoughtful for that. When I've met them, I, I felt really reassured and think, you know what, I'm, I'm, I, I could have a drink with you, I can have a meal with you, I can sit down with you, I can have a conversation. Um, um, but it's my job to look after your interests and what you feel is important. And, and yes, I can bring some of my own personality and interests and campaigns. You know, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, social affairs is something I, uh, you know, and, and uh, that, that really uh, interests me. And, you know, I, I, I can weave some of that in, but I'll only do it if I think the readers really want it. Uh, how many copies do you sell? No. Uh, I think on average it's about three ten, three twenty thousand. And what does that translate to the number of people reading it then? I think it's roughly about, isn't it, about two and a half times as how how it's how it's kind of calculated. So, the so there's a lot of eyes on this newspaper. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, the the, the great thing is, I like, yeah, we get a real response. I mean, you know, TV licenses, uh, free TV licenses for the up seventy five is an issue that our readers are really related to. And, the next thing I know, we, we put a coupon in the paper and there's 60-odd thousand people responding in a letter. And, and is it going down, is it diminishing, or is it...? What, circulation? The number of people reading the paper. I, I mean, all newspaper circulations are declining. I mean, ours is, you know, we're, we're in single-figure decline at the moment, which to me is a good thing. I mean, you know, initially, you know, I was concerned. You know, I don't want to get this wrong. In many ways, I didn't want to get it wrong for my parents, because I thought, you know, to them, it, Probably for my dad, it would have been a, a big thing. The more people reading newspapers, the better, because, I mean, they're, they're just part of our DNA. And what's your relationship with the Daily Express website, then? Uh, we, we communicate. It's not something that... You're not I'm, in charge of I'm not actively involved. We communicate if there are issues, and we, we, we talk about, uh, you know, how we should cover certain subjects, but it, it's not within my domain. So that, that is, that's quite weird, isn't it, to have this brand that is split... Well, it, look, on, it, online and yeah, and look, print it, it, with it, different it, leaderships. Do you think it, it's something we're we're looking at because, you know, the online audience is younger, uh, you know, and and they think of the world perhaps they don't think of the world massively differently because we we had two uh, groups recently of readers. One was print, one online, and what kind of amazed me is that the difference between them wasn't that massive. Uh, it is a different way of working, um, you know, and, and you know, we're, we're, we're trying to bring our worlds more and more together because it's the express. But, but commercially, I mean, advertisers are obviously obsessed with younger audiences. Yes. Um, if, if your readers are older, are, is it your mission... Well, they've got all the money. <laughs> to, to, make, ..to make them younger, or...? Uh, well, no, not necessarily. I mean, you know, the, the, you know, the grey pound, I mean, our readers 
take on average, I mean, they take more holidays than I do, and good luck to them. They have four holidays a year, uh, you know, too long haul, too short. They, they, they have a nice car. Good, I, mean, they've, I mean, they've got money, and advertisers want to communicate with them. Uh, you know, I, I, I need to produce a newspaper that advertisers are happy to being inside, and you know, I understand that that's a kind of major part of what we do here is the fact that I need to communicate to, to a wider, younger audience. We've looked at campaigns on the environment. I mean, our our environment editors toured the world, you know, looking at submarines, plastic bottom of the ocean. He went to, you know, um, he went to India, the most polluted place on, on the planet. Um, it's important that you know, we cover subject matter that uh, appeals to a younger demographic. That, but then again, I kind of think, you know, uh, our readers, even though that, you know, they're, they're older than online audience, in the fact that there is a huge amount the, of crossover, you know, where people are genuinely interested in, by the way, it's the same music, campaigns, invest, you, you know, the, the, this idea that we're all kind of in little boxes doing our own little thing, I, I think is kind of a bit wide of the mark. You know, I mean, it was in my dad, you know, when I was a kid, you know, the difference between mum and dad was probably massive. But now, I mean, I could listen to Stormzy with my 16 year old. So, so more broadly, what do you think the future of newspapers is? I'm really confident that newspapers will play an important part in maintaining our democracy. It sounds a bit grand, but... Do you it, think they do at the moment? I, or, or are you concerned by sort of the lack of plurality in the press? Newspapers are an entire story about themselves and what they do every day is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like having a relationship that is on or off and people look at them and, and we all kind of examine in, a, in, a, in our world, you know, are they doing that, why are they doing that? It is what the British public is about, we're a mix of everything and you can, you can some days, you, you know, I, I mean, I love newspapers, sometimes pick them up and go, oh, you, know, I, I, you know, that is a really strong view which I disagree with, but you, you know, I, I want someone to say it and, 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 and newspapers, they, they just are part of, I think, what Britain has kind of always been about. But do, but do you think the mainstream newspapers, the biggest mm. newspapers at the moment, are actually reflecting the, the real diversity of opinion in Britain? Because, I mean, you know, I, I a, th a lot I th of people feel that, you know, there's yeah, this sort of I basic homogeny, uh, you know, homogeneity around the centre where, you know, a lot of newspapers basically agree with each other on most things, push a very yeah. similar agenda. And that's why you're getting this sort of growth of fringe online publications yes. on both left and right. Yes. Obviously, the people who shout the most are, are going to get coverage in the newspapers and sometimes a lot of people who just have a more considered view kind of get left behind because it's kind of not news I suppose in, in some kind of way and, and I think that is the danger of where we are today is, is that yes there's a lot of shouting out there and, and, and news type is reflected they have their own stances I'm not saying it's intractable that uh, newspaper stances but at times there's a lot more going out there there's a lot happening at the moment out there in our society that perhaps we're not covering as we should and that's something I think about on a daily basis you know I mean I, I, I met a group of people from Blackpool who are passionate about Blackpool and building it up and talking to me about the the, the, the real issues there that need resolving and, and I thought you know I, I've, I've got to start telling this story properly and I, I promised them that I would and we will and I, I think well that is the real world and 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 I um, mean, what I hate is kind of the bubble. Yeah, sometimes newspapers are in this little bubble. We, we chase the same stories, you know, we, we get really excited. I mean, the, you know, the leadership contest at the moment, you know, what's he, what's Boris said, you know, what's Hunt said, and, 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 and then the kind of bigger picture occasionally gets left behind. But then, then newspapers, I think, can surprise, and sometimes there'll be an issue and you'll go, you know what, that, that, that's spot on. We, we, we needed to know that. Do, do you think the newspapers are sucking up to Boris Johnson at the moment? Uh, possibly in a way, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's the front runner. It's a, you know, nobody likes to, uh, nobody likes not to be uh, betting on the winning horse. But just explain what the relationship is then between big newspapers and political leaders. It's a curious relationship whereby uh, you, you've got to work together, you've got to understand each other. Um, you know, we make our point, you know, I mean, I mean, sometimes if we make a point, make a point as strongly, uh, someone will say, uh, why don't you pop down and have a chat about this? And, you know, we see you doing this and you're, you're campaigning on 
on this issue. I mean, the moment we'd be campaigning on cystic fibrosis and a, a drug called uh, Orcambi, which is owned by Vertex. An, uh, Vertex, yeah, we, which is a big issue, and and you know we've been quite fiery on it, and you know the NHS have said, look, let's have a chat, and uh, and uh, yeah, the government is look, we're with you, we're hearing you, we we, we pick it up, so. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots but of... But nothing's happened on that, has it? It's a good no, example, well, though, you know, yeah. where the government's called in Vertex, they had a meeting, yes. they got nowhere. Well, we're hoping they're going to get that. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's our job and we... So, print... so, so have you shut up about it? Is what no. I mean, you know. Oh, God, no. Well, we're not going to shut up about it until, it, you know, it's actually sort of resolved. And, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's something that I can get passionate about. I mean, looking at children and thinking they've got to have a future. And, look, uh, you know, the, the job of a newspaper is to challenge government and challenge thinking and challenge decision making, uh, you know. And yeah, you know, we've adopted quite strong positions. Uh, but we, we but yeah. But in that example, I mean, are you saying so? Matt Hancock, you know, says, "Look, can you get off my back?" Or you know, how does it work? Well, he he wants to dialogue. I mean, he met uh, recently, um, you know, a lovely woman called Carrie, who's you know, whose health hasn't been great, and she met with him, and, and good on him for meeting her. And, and we kind of pushed that meeting because we wanted him to hear face to face what this woman is going through. And, you know, I mean, she very emotionally told Matt Hancock, um, uh, if I die, will you tell my child why it happened? And, you know, he was greatly moved by that. It, it was important for us as a newspaper to engineer as it was that meeting. So and, and you know, he has admitted that it's you know, it's given him a renewed incentive to try to resolve this issue. So does, he, does, does he win you round by doing that? Yes. You know, it touches a kind of humanity. So, yes, it does. You know, I mean, are, are we going to go, you know, I suppose what you're asking, you know, a bit softer on him? Well, yeah, yeah in, a, in a way, you know, because we think, well, look, you know, we're going to remind him that it's his job. He presumably will sign the cheque at some stage if it comes to that, which we hope it will. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, I, I suppose there's this jostling where, you know, we're, we're, we're prodding him a bit and he's coming back and going, well, well, you know, I am doing something. So, Do you I think mean, it's too cosy, I mean, this relationship? Uh, cosy? Um, there is a self-reliance. You can, look, you can get too cosy. And certainly, to me, that's a great danger because you, you're not serving, we're not serving the readers, we're not serving democracy if, if we're becoming so close that we're ignoring stuff. And we want government to take action. It is a very curious kind of relationship where there's this kind of toing and froing and, you know, politicians obviously want newspapers, the press, the media to reflect them in a certain light and newspapers don't always want to go in that direction. So it's, um, it's a kind of, I suppose, a hostile friendship is the way. So, so what do you make as an insider in the industry of The Telegraph at the moment? You know, which which people have always jokingly called the Tory graph has now become the <laughs> Boris graph. You know, um, well, it looked like I'm, 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 what was interesting on today's splash is they they, they had Hunt uh, having a dig at, uh, at 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 Boris, which I, I suppose for balance kind of works, although it's probably at the moment Boris. 87 Hunt won. Um, look, I, I think it probably genuinely does trouble the Telegraph that they have this relationship and don't and want really? to. Really? I mean, because they seem totally um, I'm not, I compliant don't, with well, it, don't I, they? Because I mean, what people worry about is yeah. you have this sort of um, conspiracy between the Telegraph and the, and, what, and the government, as it will be, yes. um, in which they will sell Boris Johnson and Boris Johnson will yes. release his material through the <laughs> Telegraph, which you have to pay for to get, and that this is a ghastly thing for democracy. I mean, well, do, yeah, I, do, I think do you it, see that as a problem? I, I, I don't, because I think the rest of the press would kind of not take too kindly to that relationship, and I think, you know, Boris would be astute enough to um, not keep the Telegraph at arm's length, because obviously they've, they've been very much in the same bed together, um, but, yeah, I mean, the way that I mean, I mean, journalists kind of obviously get irked when um, they're not favoured, I suppose. Uh, and, and, and I, like all editors, occasionally would think, well, why didn't we get that and why they got that? So, I mean, it's this, uh, there is this um, dance, I suppose. And I think if the Telegraph and Boris are, are, are dancing the tango together and everybody's watching from the sidelines, the tango is going to end badly. Has he done the express during the? Uh, he hasn't done the express. No, I'm meeting his uh, people 
Uh, Which is odd, given you're a Conservative paper. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I don't know why. I'd, I'd, um, we've kind of reached out to him. You know, Jeremy Hunt has been more than happy to speak to us on several occasions. Uh, um, Boris has run his own campaign as he sees fit. You know, I've, um, you know, I've messaged Linton Crosby, who's obviously part of his strategy and said, look, we're here, we want to talk to him and our readers want to hear from him. And, and, and I'm hoping that's going to be the case. Have you backed a candidate? We haven't yet, no, no. And, and I'm, not, are you going to? I'm not entirely sure we, we will. Um, you know, it's quite curious in the fact that, you know, there's 160,000 people out there who will decide who the next prime minister will be. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether the Express has an opinion or not. It sort of, sort of greatly matters in that regard. Um, you know, our readers are very uh, supportive of Boris. I mean, they're, they're, they're super keen. And whenever we polled them, uh, you know, he comes out on top by a long way because they like his ebullience and they believe he will deliver Brexit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, if, if I meet with Boris over a pint and he says, look, I'm going to look after all the interests of the Express readers, then uh, who knows? Now, I have to ask you, I, I yeah. don't know whether you're aware of the ongoing um, fight that our weather presenter on Channel 4 News, Liam Dutton's had with the Express over weather stories. Um, now, you mentioned weather stories yes. yourself before you got yes. there, but apparently this is something that has continued yes. under, under, under your editorship, whereby they're, they're maybe not sort of on the front page as much, yeah. but the, the, the Express still loves weather and loves extreme weather stories that aren't necessarily true. Um, does that ring any bells with you? Um, not me personally, because... Uh, I don't print any exaggerated weather stories. Because a lot, a lot of it is online, which you're not yeah, responsible Yeah, look, for. look, I mean, I mean uh, uh, the weather was, was, was quite a big thing for me when I went to the Express because uh, of its uh, reputation in, the, in that area. And, uh, and What was its reputation? Uh, well, I, I remember, uh, who was it, John Humphreys taking the Mickey ever so... Uh, slightly out of a front page weather story that might have been a projection of, um, of, of sort of Arctic proportions. And, uh, you know, and, and this is before I joined the Express, and I, I kind of shivered myself, it just kind of, uh, it, you know, I mean, John Humphreys is a hero of mine. I kind of thought, oh my God, you know, bloody hell, how would I wake up thinking of that if I was on the Express? As part of my kind of early mantra, uh, my early messaging, to the staff was uh, no anti-immigrant, no anti-Islamic, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just want to keep the weather stories straighter than straight. Factual weather is as important as any other story, getting it right, so. What's been your biggest success, do you think, in terms of change? We were on the kind of stop funding hate list. Uh, and, you know, I was conscious of that from uh, kind of early days and... Because of Islamophobia? Yeah, yeah, that kind of troubled me greatly because, you know, stop funding hate. I mean, the, the mere words don't resonate well with anybody. And they, they published a report actually not long into my tenure that, that, that kind of said, look, they noted the express had changed, and that was really important to me. Um, you know, last night uh, I appeared at the House of Commons and spoke. Uh, it was the Muslim Council of Britain who just published a report on um, Islamophobia in the, in the press. And Baroness Vossi got up and praised the Express for the changes that we've made. And you know what? If it's the only thing I've ever done in my career, you know, fine, I'll stick at that. So what, what, what insight has that given you into Islamophobia in the, in the media? Like, why do you think it's, it's been there? I don't look. I, I, I think it it, it it sometimes sort of like unconscious bias in the fact that you know that I've never met a journalist who's Islamophobic. Never, and I, I, I truly mean that. I've never come across anybody. And but we've but, already established that you're printing stuff that you don't personally necessarily believe. You're, you're serving an audience. So, so do you think it was that they thought that their readers were I, I think a bunch should, of bigots? Uh, well, I. <laughs> Um, I don't, I just, I, I think that because of, I think each story in isolation probably didn't mean that much, but things were taken out of context and there were some headlines that just were, you know, if, if and I put myself, you know, if I was a Muslim, I'd be reading that and I'd think, you know, this is not my society, this is not my country, I, I'd have reacted really strongly against it. And I think cumulatively, 
it obviously had an impact. And, and you know, that isn't great. Well, it's pretty horrible, in fact. And there's no reason, you know, we, this is not the kind of society we should be living in. And, and, and the readers are not like that at all. It, it's just that the a perception does mean a lot. And the perception was that the Express was anti-Muslim. And, you know, I, 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 You're I, I, quite I, forgiving, aren't you, to the people who... Who were writing this stuff? I mean, well, I it wasn't. To be honest, it wasn't really the staff that were writing it. It, 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 it was more sort of headline than anything, uh, and the headlines were stark. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I appeared before the Home Affairs Select Committee. You know, last year I didn't really want to appear. You know, I mean, it's kind of, you know, would you, would you like to put the noose around your 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 your, your, your head, Mr. Jones? And uh, you know, but I thought I, I've got I've got to appear, and 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 answer. I, I said, look, I felt really really uncomfortable with some of the front pages that, with, with the Express's name on it. And I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to change that. It's really important to me. It's not the world I want to live in, you know. You, you kind of reach an age, you think, look, you know, I'm, it's important to me to pass on a society for the next generation. I'm really confident the next generation are not going to have any of this crap. You know, they're, they're not. You know, I, I speak to, I try to speak to as many young people as possible. And, and you know what? They're, 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 you know, and, and I said this last night at, at the meeting, and I said, look, this issue, you know, will be gone at some time in the future. It won't be an issue because the generation coming through think really differently and, and it'll be uh, anathema to it. I can remember when stories about someone being gay, you know, you know, AIDS, the gay plague, the kind of language and tone that was used in the past um, was you know, reprehensible. I, I think we've come a long way since then. I, I think um, the Muslim community have been badly served. Uh, I think people have been fearful because of, uh, you know, sort of terrorism and, 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 and feeding on fear, to me, is not a great thing. It suggests that journalists have been out of touch. What yes, say, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The journalists haven't kept up with where society is. Yes, uh, that, look, that's to me the biggest danger. The biggest danger is the fact that you are left behind and you, you, you're, you're espousing kind of attitudes that are passed by. We're at a very important point in our history today as to how you know. I mean, everybody talks about healing divisions in society. Well, we need to be proactive in the way we do it. You know, we've we've got it with Brexit and Remain, and it remains to be seen how we can somehow bring people together, but... Is that part of your mission? Uh, I mean, do you see yourself as a sort of a healing... Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I see myself as looking at it at kind of a, at, at the bigger picture and wanting to present a society that we're all more comfortable with. As I said, the response to what we've done so far, the changes we've made, uh, the campaigns we're running actively almost every day is something the readers the readers have welcomed and reacted to really, really positively, and 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 that encourages me to to do to do more of that, and and I I, I see it as yes, I'm looking after their interests, but you know I want to show the readers a wider world, a bigger world, the global world we live in, uh, and and I think newspapers and the media need to do more of that, and I'm very conscious that 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 and that's a major part of my job. I think there is this understanding now that we need to do things differently. You know, we need to make bold moves. We can't just go on with the status quo. I mean, I mean, the, the do you mean with regard to Brexit? Or well, just regards to how we deal with all the multitude of issues that we have out there, whether it's the NHS, social mobility, social care, you know, so sort of giving people equal opportunities, uh, the way we deal with, um, you know, sort of uh, equality of, of pay conditions, you know, people being in jobs that have no real future, sort of training, education. You know, we're, we're, we're lagging behind. Look, we've just wasted, not wasted, but I mean, the last three years have meant that government's not been able to make the kind of movement that we've needed. We, we are, to me, behind the curve. But, you know, that could quite easily lead to newspapers like yours getting behind populist leaders, couldn't it? You know, if you say we want big, 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 bold moves. Yes. Um, you know, you, you could create demagogues, which is another thing people worry about in, in terms of the relationship between newspapers and politics. Yeah, I mean, certainly you do, we don't need... This is not the time, I think, for a demagogue. And, I mean, this is a time for somebody who can actually communicate with the population as a whole, whatever their, their political views might be. And, and that is the greatest challenge that we face, that once 
uh, you know, the new prime minister is in place, our a Brexit is resolved, which obviously is kind of paralysed. You know, a lot of business, uh, you know, has been you know terribly divisive, and people have become intransigent and. And, and, and all the other stuff that we, we need to be cracking on with. I mean, we, we so don't need a demagogue. We need, we need someone who's going to go, you, you know what, yeah, I'm just going to take a wider view. In terms of trust, hmm. do, you, do you believe what you read in the newspapers? Yes, yes. You know, I, I, I wouldn't pick them up and read them every day if I didn't believe them. I mean, you know, I mean... All of them? Um, all of them, yes. Look, our industry's had issues in the past. Newspapers did things which, you know, <laughs> where the truth was... was Occasionally, very occasionally, sort of masquerading as something else. But I, I think we all know today the fact that you get something wrong, I get something wrong, we get something wrong, you people instantly are on top of you. So, yeah, I mean, you, look, to me, unless you're printing the truth every day, you are wasting your time. You are apps. Well, you're conning the reader who's paying money for it. And I, yeah, there's no reason to do it. You know, no reason to do it at all. And and, and in many ways, my, my, my kind of... My optimism about newspapers is, is that, you know, we've, we've kind of all grown up, you know, we've all grown up and, and we've realised, look, this is a response, it's a responsibility. But, but do you see why, you know, if you look at your front page yes. headline today, furious yes. Labour leader yes. surrenders to the Remainers yes. and the headline is finally Corbyn yep. reveals Brexit yep. betrayal. You, you know, you must see why a Corbynista, probably your son, yes. would probably say, well, that's not true. Well, he'd, he'd certainly be unhappy about it. Um, I mean, but at the same time, you know, so Jeremy Corbyn has, has, has hardly maintained a, you know, he. I mean, they've 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 dithered on this position so many times that, and and finally, you know, there is this move that that, that accepts where they're going to be. And look, I mean, I'm look, uh, betrayal is the way I'll read. It. I mean, I've I think very hard about using words like betrayal, and 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 I. I, I I've only done it a couple of times. I, you know, I, I did it today because I thought it was justified. I mean, it, the word... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I get quite nervous with words that are quite punchy like yeah. that. You know, I mean, I remember Chuck Ramuna it's getting up... close to treason and, you well, know, all yeah, those yeah, sorts of things. You know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, look, they're, they're, they're... I mean, I've felt very carefully about those use of words. Uh, and, you know, we discussed that headline for quite a long time. You can go too far. Newspapers can go too far. And in the past, they've done so. I, I, you know, if uh, it, it's it's important to have boundaries because, and and I think especially in 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 in, in the kind of press that you 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 shouldn't go too far. I mean, and I think people know when we've gone too far. Um, we ask all our guests um, mm. what what they would do with the world if <laughs> they could change it. Um, do you have a list? A list of things I'd like to do. Um, uh, well, it, it sounds a bit sort of like a sort of Miss World contestant, isn't it? Um, I'd like... It, it's important for me to... Everybody to have the same chances in life, and, and I believe that both in my work life and my personal life, I try to achieve that. Uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to respect the other person's point of view, even if you don't agree. I, I want to feel that society is moving in the right direction for everybody and and you, you don't know, want to have to send your kids to Eton for example look that's elitist but although my son said to my, my son yeah it is I mean I'd like everybody to have that same education and the reason why I sent my son there is because I wanted I've said to him I said look I'm going to give you the best toolkit you're ever going to get in life and and it is you know and I mean you know I mean I have issues with some of the things you know I mean, Eton is more about service today, and it's going to be fascinating. Boris, moving forward, is it about self or is it service? Uh, and, uh, you know, I tell my son, I said, look, you go into banking, I'll disinherit you. I promise you, I'll disinherit you. So listen to me, go into banking, you won't get a penny. Uh, he doesn't want to be a banker. Uh, he wants to be a Labour MP, but that's his issue. But, I, um, but yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, I, I, I Education is crucial. We need to really look at, at, at what... And, and, you know, for the express reader, you know, for my parents, you know, they wanted to give me a chance. And, and, and maybe in the way they treated me, the reason why I'm here today is because of them, is because they, they, they kind of just said, right, just get on with it, get out there, do something. Just do something. I mean, they didn't know what 
I was going to do. They just wanted me to do something with a degree of passion. You know, I don't want legacies or anything like that because I just think it's a really bad word and nobody ever matches up to the legacy they think they have with them. But I, I kind of think making just small, tiny little bits of change uh, can only be helpful. Gary Jones, thank you very much indeed.